Hi, I'm Dan. And I'm Swampy. And we're the creators of Phineas and Ferb. Uh, what you're about to see is what we call a pitch reel. It's something we did two years ago when we were first trying to sell Disney on the idea of doing this show. We pitched them a storyboard rather than showing them a script. And we had a storyboard like this and we would we would walk this through with the executives uh, in here in Burbank. And I would do all the voices, like I'm telling them a good story but it has visuals to it. They liked it and asked what we wanted to send overseas to the overseas execs who are part of the decision-making process. We thought they meant like a bribe or something. I said, let's record my voice pitching it, send it home with me, and then just in my editing program at home, I'll edit the pictures together. And so the whole weekend I spent doing that, and I put sound effects and some temporary music. But you, you'll see that it has a lot of the energy of the, of the show and really gave people a good feeling for what the show was going to be like. And I think that that's how we were able to sell it to Disney. And how they were sure that they didn't want you to be the voice of Isabella. It was not to be. Oh, well. I got Doofenshmirtz, though. You'll be able to see just how similar the show was then to how it turned out in the final. Although you will see the original demo we did for the theme song. Uh, which is a little sort of old-timey. I think that the, the Disney wanted to make it a little more new. Some of the, the characters' names have changed. Changed and, some uh, names, and we've edited some scenes for time. You'll see the extended version of Phineas's describing the roller coaster to all, all the kids in the tent. <laughs> so anyway, this is what we put together. I think, uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. It gives you a, sort of a feel for how the show came into being, and you'll see it's very, very similar to the way Roller Coaster finally aired. So, Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so enjoy. Hi, I'm Dan Pavenmeyer, and this is my show, Phineas and Ferb. My co-creator on Phineas and Ferb is Jeff Marsh. That's him and I accepting an award for a musical episode of Rocco that we wrote together. Jeff likes to be called Jeff Swampy Marsh because it makes his name 15 letters long and therefore bigger than most other people's names, including mine, which at 12 letters is no slouch. Phineas and Ferb is inspired by my summers growing up when my mom would always encourage us to do something creative with our time rather than sit around bored. That's her on the right with her fingers in her nose. She used to say, summer's short, you gotta make every day count. And that's exactly what Phineas and Ferb do. So, without any further ado, here's our show. We open on a beautiful summer sun over Phineas and Ferb's hometown. We pan down into their backyard and push slowly in on uh, Phineas and Ferb enjoying the shade under the tree in their backyard with their pet platypus, Perry. As we do this, a Disney chorus sings, There's a hundred and four days of summer vacation before school comes along just to end it. So the annual problem for our generation is finding a good way to spend it. Like maybe... Building a rocket or fighting a mummy or climbing up the Eiffel Tower. Discovering something that doesn't exist hey. Giving a monkey a shower Don't try this at home Surfing tidal waves Creating nanobots or locating Frankenstein's brain It's over here Finding a dodo bird Painting a continent or driving our sister insane It's a short drive As you can see, there's a whole lot of stuff to do before school starts this fall Very. So stick with us, cause Phineas and Ferb are gonna do it all Okay, we fade in on the same backyard that uh, Phineas and Ferb always start every episode in. They're sitting under the tree in the shade, and we push in on them. Phineas says, So, Ferb, what do you want to do today? Ferb shrugs. What about Perry? What does he want to do? We see Perry. He makes a weird purring, chirping noise. <coughs> well, he is a platypus. They don't do much. I, for one, am starting to get bored. And boredom is something up with which I will not put. The first thing they're going to ask us when we get back to school is, what did we do over summer? We, we better have something great to tell them. I mean, no school for three months. Our lives should be a roller coaster. And I mean a good roller coaster, not like that one we rode at the state fair. Flashback of the state fair. They're coming up over the top of the first hill. We pull out and we see them come to an abrupt end. Please exit to the left. Man, that was lame. Why, if I built a roller coaster, I would... That's it! I know what we're gonna do today! Mom off screen. Phineas Ferb! I'm gonna go pick up a few things. You boys stay out of trouble, okay? Okay, Mom. We're gonna build a roller coaster! Mom walks to the car. We see Candace poke her head out the window and she comes zipping out and zipping back in screen in the foreground. I'm in charge, right? You did tell them I'm in charge. Relax, Candace. Nobody has to be in charge. But what, what if there's an emergency? Like what? Uh, what if, um, I don't know. I what if a satellite falls out of orbit and crashes into the house? 
If that happens, you're in charge. Yes! Mom says I'm in charge! Conditionally! Whatever. Wait a minute, what are you doing? Homework. It's summer. Fine, you wait to the last minute then. Well, I'm watching you. Boom, 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 boom. Mm? And I'm in charge. Conditionally. Bam. Mm? Ring. Phone ring off screen. She goes to pick it up. Hello? Oh, hi, Stacy. I can't go to the mall right now. Mom just went to the store. She left me in charge. You know, conditionally. Uh, hey, if you go, could, could you see if Jeremy's there? He's the cute one that works at Mr. Slushy Burger. Yeah, he totally smiled at me last time I was there. I just about died. No, I did. I, I really did. Well, I mean, I didn't, but I just about did. No, I told you I can't. I'm watching my brother and my stepbrother, because they're always up to something. Yeah, and they never get into trouble, because Mom never catches them. But one of these days, I'm going to see to it that she catches them red and lion roar. Would you hold it down out there? I'm on the phone! Well, like I said, Mom left me in charge so that there'll be no shenanigans today. What are they doing right now? Their homework, I think. Man, they are such dorks. W why do you ask? What do you mean you can see it from your house? See what? She comes running out and sees Phineas and Herbert building this giant roller coaster out of the backyard. Phineas, what is this? This? This is genius. Do you like it? Oh, I am gonna go get Mom, and when she sees what you are doing, you are going down. Down, down, down! Okay. But do you like it? T-O-W-N, down! She storms off. Ding, 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 ding. They watch her go. Hey, we need a blowtorch and some more peanut butter. Candace is riding her bike down the driveway. Isabel's walking up to see Phineas. Hey, Candace, is Phineas home? Isabel watches her go and then walks back up the driveway on Candace. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Down! Down, I say! On the back gate, Isabel opens and says, Hey, Ferb. Hey, Phineas. Oh, hey, Isabella. What you doing? Building a roller coaster. In your backyard? Some of it. Wow. Isn't that kind of impossible? Is there something I can do for you? I was going to go to the pool. You want to go swimming? I'm kind of in the middle of something here. Oh, right. Okay. Well, I'll see you later then. Okay. Hey, Ferb, you got enough rivets up there? Gives him the high sign, starts riveting. <laughs> Phineas looks around. Where, where's Perry, anyway? As if in answer to the question, we cut to another side of the house. And Perry comes waddling around the corner, hops onto his back feet, throws on a fedora, pulls out a remote control, and opens a secret door on the side of the house. <laughs> he runs over to the chair. We hear a female voice. You have one new secret mission. Good morning, Agent P. Evil Dr. Middlesmirtz is up to his old tricks. For reasons unknown to us, he has bought, bought up 80% of the country's tinfoil. If this were anyone else, it would just be weird, but with Middlesmirtz, you can never be too careful. I want you to get over there to his hideout right away and find out what he's doing and put a stop to it. You know, unless he's just watching TV or something, in which case, use your discretion. As always, Agent P, it is imperative that your cover identity as a mindless domestic pet remains intact. If the family you live with ever suspects that you are working for the government, you will have to be relocated. Now get out there. We're all counting on you. Runs and gets into his platypus mobile. He sees something off screen and covers his face. The way I see it, the solid fuel rockets kick in in the mall parking lot, and then we release the snakes during our corkscrew around the interstate. I'm going to go get the snakes. Chicken. Ferb puts down his welding hat and starts welding. Exterior grocery store. Candace runs in. Mom, you got to come home right now. Did a satellite crash into the house? No, no, no. you got to see what Phineas and Ferb are doing. Seems like we've had this conversation before. What do you mean? I seem to recall you telling me that the boys were training monkeys to juggle bicycles, and then when I came home, there was a stunning lack of monkeys. I still don't know how they cleaned that up so fast. I mean, the poop alone should have taken... And didn't you tell me last week that Phineas was mass-producing robots or something? They were androids, and they were terrifying. And yet the house was clean. Wait, maybe they androids cleaned up after the monkeys. So what's the emergency this time? They're building a roller coaster! How original. Most boys just build forts. No, I mean a real roller coaster! Candace, seriously, isn't Phineas a little young to be a roller coaster engineer? Cut to a car assembly plant. They're building the roller coaster through it. The foreman looks suspiciously at, at Phineas. Aren't you a little young to be a roller coaster engineer? Yes. Yes, I am. Oh, well, I must say I'm very impressed. Forms all seem to be in order, although I've never seen them filled out in crayon before, so if there's anything I can get you, anything at all, just let me know. You think we could borrow one of those gadgets? That's the mechanical arm that uh, they use on the assembly plant. We cut to the sky. 
and we hear something building its way through strength. Mechanical arm is building the roller track in front of them. They're just relaxing in the back. Now this is the life. Hey, Phineas. Oh, hi, Isabella. He looks down and sees uh, her in her backyard. What you doing? Still building that roller coaster I was telling you about. Yeah, I can see. So it's going well then? We think so. It's so manly. When's it going to be done? Oh, you'll know. Everyone will know. We'll put up flyers. Cool, I can't wait. See you then. She runs off. We're going to need flyers. Pan over to Ferb using a Gutenberg press, pulls off a flyer and shows it to him. Excellent. (laughs) Builds it away off screen. We stay here and push in on this building in the background. And it says, Middle Schmertz Evil Incorporated on it. From behind it, Perry swings out smashes through the window and lands in the middle of Dr. Middleschmert's evil lair. Well, 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 Perry the Platypus, what an unexpected surprise. And by unexpected, I mean completely expected! You are obviously here to thwart my plan to reverse the rotation of the Earth, but you are too late! Wait a minute, is it 11 o'clock yet? Oh, wait, hold on one moment, just a bit now. Now, now you are too late! I promised myself I wouldn't let anyone stop me after 11 o'clock. He hits a button. (laughs) That is right, Mr. Platypus. I, Dr. Heinz Mittelschmerz, have covered the entire eastern seaboard with tinfoil. And when I put my giant magnet next to my ingenious magnetism magnifier, I will pull the east in a westerly direction, thereby reversing the rotation of the earth. You may well ask yourself, why would he do this? What could he possibly have to gain? Well, let me just answer that by saying, I haven't really worked out all the bugs yet. I mean, the tinfoil alone cost a lot. I don't have all the receipts right now, but it was a lot. We cut to an establishing shot of grocery store again. But, but, Mom, I'm telling you, they're building it, and it's huge. It's twice the size of the house. And somehow they got use of a crane. I mean, how does a nine-year-old even rent a crane? Phineas and Ferb present the coolest coaster ever now open. Mom, come here, you gotta see this. Immediately, kids come rushing in. (laughs) Hey, Phineas and Ferb got a roller coaster. Cool, yeah, that's fresh. You think you get a discount if you bring the flyer? Maybe. We better take it. They rip down the flyer. Here, look, 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 look. See? See? I told you I'm not crazy. I told you. And you're not crazy because? Ah! I see your point, Candace. No crazy person would scream at a post like that. Ah! I'll be in the dairy section if you want to come yell at some cheese or something. Cut to a shot of the poster uh, on a sign pointing to the house. We pan over to the house. We see a a tent in the background in the beginnings of the the roller coaster, the bottom of the roller coaster. A bunch of kids running up the driveway. We see Ferb dressed in a red vest holding the velvet rope for the kids to come in. The last one goes in. He closes the rope, closes the tent flaps inside the tent. He walks up onto stage where there's a microphone, taps the microphone. We get a little bit of feedback. Stands there for a moment. We think he's going to talk. And then he just steps aside and gestures, introducing Phineas, who rises up theatrically with a bunch of dry eye smoke. Phineas reaches forward and grabs the mic. As soon as he does, we see disco lighting, all sorts of lighting effects, and and we hear music. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, you are here this afternoon to witness the next generation of amusement park rides. May I present to you a spectacle most of the morning in the making. We pan over and we see that Ferb is playing the guitar and he's got a disco ball attached to a miner's hat on his head. Mark your cat. Calendars, ladies and gentlemen, because you will want to tell your grandchildren about the day you rode the coolest coaster ever. Ferb grabs a rope and pulls it, and the entire tent collapses around them. We see the shadow drop off of everybody's faces as they look up in awe. Cut to a shot at the bottom of the roller coaster and do a slow pan all the way up to this impossibly high first peak of the roller coaster up in the clouds. An eagle comes flying by. So who wants to go first? <laughs> to fasten your seatbelts, insert the metal tab into the buckle. To release, just pull back on the... Oops, sorry about that. Well, you get the picture. The emergency exits are located... Well, I guess it's just this whole area up here, isn't it? Well, that's about it. Enjoy the ride. And please remain seated while the ride is in motion. Permane ser sentados, por favor. Now this... This is a view. We see a long, extreme down shot of the city. They teeter back and forth. You guys all signed the waivers, right? 
everybody's screaming, ah, ah, boom, 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 all through these twists and turns, corks going around the energy, ah, they go through uh, under this vat of snakes and dumps onto them. <laughs> Relax, they're just rubber. They go down into this big thing of mud. <laughs> Back out the other side. Now they're covered in snakes and mud. <laughs> sort of muffled screams. Into a car lock comes zipping out the other side. They're all completely clean. <laughs> hey, look, here comes the... <laughs> and all the kids go... <laughs> Screaming, they're going into the circus. I'm shooting out the other side. Cedric, Alfredo, so that's where you guys went. They jump off. And look, it's the X-37. I'm glad to see they're all doing well. They go around Middle Schmertz Incorporated, and they continue off, and we push in on Middle Schmertz Incorporated. Dr. Middle Schmertz is going on and on in the background about how much everything costs. I'm telling you, it's nothing but expenses. Have you ever tried to ship two tons of tinfoil? Ha-ha, <laughs> <laughs> you missed! Hits Middle Schmertz in the toe. Ow! 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 And the fight ensues. Jumps up, bang, smash, crash. They do a little sword fight. Ow! Throws a console at him. He jumps off the other edge of it. Ha! Now you really are too late. The entire top of the building is opening. Behold my magnificent magnetism magnifier! Now quake in your boots and watch helplessly while the unimaginable electromagnetic forces pull the eastern seaboard, thereby reversing rotation of... Well, that didn't work. We see the tinfoil flying through the air, congealing into a giant ball. Oh. And now it appears that we have a 20-ton ball of tinfoil traveling 200 miles an hour directly at us! Quickly! We must separate the magnifier from the magnet before it is too late! Cut to the grocery store. I know I had my club card in here somewhere. I, I always have it with me, but my purse is such a disaster. I, you know how it is. In the parking lot of the grocery store is part of the roller coaster. She hears a rumble start and the kids come... <laughs> through frame. Their butts are mine now. Mom! It's no use. They won't budge. We are doomed. Perry sees a helicopter fly overhead. Shoots a grappling hook at the helicopter. Jumps up on top and the, he and the helicopter pulls the magnet. You did it. You saved us. I'm sorry I ever said anything bad about... <laughs> Magnifier flies up, connects with the magnet, and the electromagnetic forces start coming through again. This time attaching it to the top of the roller coaster. Pulls the whole roller coaster out of its moorings and up over the city. Just as Candace is pulling her mom into frame. You just gotta see it! Look! Look! See? Okay, I give up. What am I supposed to be looking at? No! It's not possible! I'm gonna go get the cart. Uh, it was right here and it was huge! Mom! Time to go, I've got Frozen's. Okay. okay, so so you think Phineas and Ferb are still under that stupid tree, right? Well, yes, that would be my guess. Fine, then let's go home now! My, you can be awfully helpful when you're having a psychotic break. See the helicopter flying over the city. We push in on the roller coaster. <laughs> Ferb looks over the edge of the coaster. Phineas looks over, sees that they're flying over the city. Hmm. Bonus! Pull up to show the helicopter, which is smoking very badly. It's, it's under a huge amount of strain. <gasps> Perry jumps off to land on the tracks and gets picked up in the car instead. Suddenly, he's right behind Phineas and Fur. Oh, there you are, Perry. <gasps> Wondered where you were. Oh, and nice hat, Isabella. She sees the hat and swoons. They go off the end of the coaster and into the city streets. They get launched up over a dump truck and land on a crane that flips them up. Funny, I don't remember this in the blueprints. You pull out to see that it's a jet airliner and they're caught on the tail. And I'm sure this is new. Mom and Candace driving home. Candace looks out the window and sees the jet taking the roller coaster and all the kids off into the distance. <laughs> I really worry about you sometimes, Candace. Roller coaster drops off the end of the plane and lands in the Statue of Liberty, which sends it flying all the way across the country from New York to South Dakota. It lands in Teddy Roosevelt's glass of a shot off into the top of a redwood. Welcome to Mr. Slushenberger. May I take your order? Anybody want fries? <laughs> they go flying all the way across the Atlantic Ocean and hit the Eiffel Tower, which bends all the way over. They get to a little croissant shop. Croissants? Anybody want croissants? Fling! They go flying oh, way wow. up, 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 up
up, 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 and into space. Beep, beep, beep. You know, if that crashes to Earth, Candace is in charge. Ah! The front of the roller coaster car starts catching on fire as they re-enter the atmosphere. They scream, ah! We see them going through all this cloud cover, and suddenly the cloud cover stops. We should have charged more. Phineas and Ferb's driveway. The car pulls in. Mom says, okay, we're home. Are you happy, Candace? Candace runs out, opens the back gate, and sees that, as she suspected, Phineas and Ferb are not in the backyard under the tree. Yes! See, Mom? I told you they weren't there. Mom pokes her head in. Oh, hi, Phineas. Hi, Ferb. Hi, Mom. Come on, Candace. Help me with the groceries. But, 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 Back on Phineas and Ferb, the tree rustles above them and... Hey, Phineas, that was great. Way too cool. Bam. That was awesome. Can we do it again? Sorry, only one ride per customer. That was great, Phineas. Will it be open tomorrow? Nah, don't want to get in a rut. So what are you going to do tomorrow? I don't know yet. Maybe you can teach Perry some tricks. Well, he is a platypus. They don't do much. And Ferb says, they're the only mammals to lay eggs. Well, maybe he'll lay an egg. Okay, cool. See you tomorrow, Phineas. Bye, Ferb. So what should we do tomorrow? There's a world of possibilities. Maybe we should make a list. We hear Candace in the background. Mom! Mom, give it a rest, Candace. We fade out.